Hi there, it's Kathy House with Be Creative with Kathy. Um, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I have a really cute card for you today. This is it right here. Now it's a stamp set that's in this um, mini catalog and I guess you'd call it a background stamp. It's just one cat hair on my thing. One big stamp that looks like this. And when I saw it, especially because I live here in Denver, Colorado, and you go to the mountains and you see, I don't know, it's just a really pretty, pretty stamp set with the deer. So I, um, when I saw it, I thought, I don't know what you can do with it. I didn't have anything wrapped around in my head, but I've been playing with it for a couple days now. And I found a really cute card like I showed you this one here, and I'll show you how I make it. Now, let me tell you where I was inspired to make this card that in the catalog here, and I should have looked up the, oh, look, Graceful Deer, page 27. I should have looked it up before. But this card here, now here I believe, and in fact, I did look up the um, ingredients, and it said that they stamped it in the Stays On Saddle Brown. Now, I don't have the Stays On Saddle Brown, so I thought the new Pecan Pie looked almost the same, but it looks to me like they fussy cut their deers out here, and when I'm doing Christmas cards, I don't want to fussy cut 125 times three little deer to put on my card. So I found a way to mask it and I can make it into this two tone just like this. So that was my first inspiration. And hey, while I have the mini catalog out here, I should let you know that starting tomorrow, the um, discounts on the retirement list here. So every time a catalog comes to an end they have what they call a retirement list or a last chance list and some of the products in that catalog that won't be carrying over to the next catalog they put at a discount so I'll have that on my blog too so you can see and like I said that sale starts tomorrow or at least those markdowns start tomorrow and they're while supplies last so if there's something in the catalog that you've been waiting thinking maybe maybe not maybe now that it's marked down it's a real for sure that you want it don't wait because like i said that last um while supplies last go fast and then there's a carryover list that um will show you what's carrying over either online it'll just be online or to be in the next catalog and if you have any questions like that be sure and let me know and i'll answer them i'm also if you subscribe to my blog i'm going to send those out in an email this um this afternoon or this evening once i get my blog caught up and up to date i think i need my niece's help Thank you, Sarah. But um, I'll get that out, like I said, in an email. The other thing that inspired me for this card was when I went to backstage, I got a swap here, and I'm going to take it out so you can see it better. That looks like this. Look how cute that card is. So I kind of combined the card from the catalog and this card, and that's how I came up with my card. And this swap is from Jess Brigden. So thank you, Jess, for swapping with me. It's a great card. I really like it. And then when I thought about Jess's card, I thought, you know, I got another swap. And this one is from Angela. And Angela, I think it's Zabata. I always mess up your last name. But this is Angela's card. And now look at her card. Her card, I believe, is stamped on crumb cake. And then she took and colored the back. Now, if that's not right, Angela, because I know Angela watches my video on replay you got to make a comment and let us know the snow flip the snow is embossed you can feel the embossing powder over the deer but i'm interested to hear how you got the background different than the the ground i'm assuming you colored it with some stamp and blend but let us know okay so angela's card is just simply beautiful like that so thank you for swapping me that was another swap that angela and i did but let me go ahead and show you how I made my card. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is I'm going to try on Facebook Live, like am I nuts, to put my sticker onto my stamp set, stamp set and show you how you can put big stickers onto stamps and easy. Now, I've already punched out these little holes. There's three of them, little pieces right there. And I've already taken the back off because it has that white back. But the sticker here, I'm going to take and I'm going to use my Stamparatus. Now, this is just a um, placement tool. So if you have a placement tool, especially with these big stamps, I highly recommend that you use them. Stampin' Up! used to sell the, sell the Stamparatus. We don't anymore, but I'm still going to use mine today. So you take your plate, 
from your Stamparatus, and I'm going to take, or your positioning tool, and then I'm going to take my sticker for the stamp and carefully peel it off here. Now, the part that's exposed, when you take it off, you have this covering here. That's the part that you want onto your stamp. This part here is the clean part that's going to stick to your block, or in my case, it's going to stick to my plate. So I'm going to carefully remove that and then get those three um, little sticker or those holes, I don't know what you call those, out of there. And I'm going to lay this face down because now this is the clean mount part. This is the sticky that's going to stick to your stamp. And I'm going to lay that down. Use my take a pick tool. Let me find one that has a pokey. There it is. And carefully without scratching my my um, plate or the sticker, I'm going to take that backing off. Just like that. And let's take the other side off. It's loose down here. Oh, I didn't get my <laughs> sticker stuck to my plate. I should have stuck it down better. That's right. Try to get here we go and then take the other side of the sticker off and then you can see through your plate now and i made sure i have a dark surface back here even <clears throat> well the plate won't work because it's white but then we're going to kind of hover and i might get my head in the camera because i want to put it on there straight but you can see see how you can see the stickers off and now it's perfect where it goes but now let me put my head in the camera again i can put my sticker on my stamp just perfect just like that and apply a little bit of pressure and you have your sticker onto your stamp and now boy look how nice perfect every time okay yay it works sometimes stuff works live on facebook sometimes it doesn't okay so let's go ahead and make the card the first thing i'm going to do is with my stamparatus base here i have just the plain old base i have this magnetic sheet that a friend of mine gave me they sell these at Stampin' Storage. So if you want one of these magnetic sheets, it just gives it a little bit more of a cushion. And it's going to hold my magnet on there. Or my magnet's going to hold to that and hold my paper on really tight. So then we used to sell these grid papers, but just a scrap of paper so I don't get ink all over my magnet. And I'm going to use the um, magnet back here to hold that all into place. And I'm going to place it up here. Now it's all set and ready to go, right? So then next, I'm going to take a piece of basic white cardstock. And now, let's see, this one is going to be the front or the mat of my card here. So this is five inches by three and three fourths. Now, so you don't have to worry about measurements here. I'll have all the measurements on my blog. And that's BeCreativeWithKathy.com. And the link will be in the description below so you can go find that easily. All the supplies will be there. The measurements will be there. Um, hopefully everything you need. And that all information will be correct. Sometimes I don't say the right words here. But anyway, I like to use this removable adhesive. Now, this isn't something you can get at Stampin' Up. You can get this online, I think, Amazon. And I'll have a link to that on my blog. If you go to the shop now button and you hover over there, there's something called, I don't know, craft room essentials, something like that. I'll, I'll put the link in the description too, but this is going to hold my paper and I'm going to put it down here in the corner. So I get a better, it just gives a better coverage if you stay away from the edges. So, and I put that now my paper won't move. So my magnets holding down my grid paper, my grid papers holding down my paper and now, like I said, nothing's going to move. And then I'm going to lay my stamp now that he has my sticker or the sticker. I can kind of see how that bird, I want to make sure this bird is up in the corner. And now on my sample card here, I want my bird a little bit higher so we get more or less waste up here. So I'm going to try to stick my bird way up there in the camera, get as much or in the corner there and try to get as much deer as I can. So I think that looks, let me tuck it down just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to, of course, pick it up with my plate here. And now since this is red rubber, I'm going to even use this under my plate so I can, it won't stick to my paper, but my glue or my tape is holding my paper down anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this with my lighter color ink. 
and like I said, I'm going to use that um, pecan pie. It's, um, like I said in the catalog, Stampin' Up! said it used the saddle, oh shoot, saddle brown stays on. But like I told you, I don't have that, so I'm going to just come up or decide what's close enough. And I'm going to ink that up good. And since we're using the position tool, if I don't have it perfect, I can do it again. I'm going to use my hockey puck here. A friend of mine gave me this, and I think this works really well with positioning tools. This is another thing that I got, I found online. Like I said, mine came from a friend, but everybody kept asking me where I got it. But now look how pretty that is. Now I'm not going to move anything. I'm going to take another piece of bridge paper, just kind of like as a scrap paper, and I'm going to lay this over that one. I'm going to ink him up again. This time we don't have to have him inked perfect, but then I'm going to stamp on that scratch paper. Now it doesn't have to be grid paper. It could even be a post-it note or something like that, but it just needs to be something kind of thin. So a piece of copy paper would work or something like that. Now that I have that stamped, I'm going to move this and we're going to do some fussy cutting. Although we're not going to be very fussy <laughs> with our cutting. I'm going to just take a pair of scissors and I want to cut those deers. And dang, I should have noticed where I put my Stampin' Up! logo here, but I'll still make it work. I want to just cut around and you'll see I'm not going to be too particular, but I want to get all of those trees away from my deer. And so, if Jody's happened to be watching, Jody and I talked about how you could do Christmas cards like this, and she's the one that really got me um, motivated. Maybe that's the word. It's going to be hard to find his leg now that I've put my logo right in the wrong spot. Anyway, she's the one. She wanted to do this Christmas card, and her and I talked about it, how easy it would be to mask those deers. And Jody, you are absolutely right. It's totally easy to mask the deer. So I'm coming up along his legs. Now notice I cut between his legs here because there's a little bit of snow or um, brown that we want to have darker. So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to come up here and get rid of this part of the tree behind his tummy. And let me get rid of all of this. So you can see I have to fussy cut that deer. Oops, wait, I need to get closer here because there's more snow over here. But I want to keep all the, the ground cover, I guess you could call it. There's hardly any between his leg. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I'm done. Okay, so now I have my little deer that's totally going to cover up the deer, but it's not going to cover up the branches of the tree or those, or I should say the stump of the tree or those pieces of snow. So real quick, light, we'll do the other ones. Now I know I'm always saying that Christmas cards need to be fast and I didn't want to cut out a bunch of deer for all my cards. In this case, you only have to cut them out once, maybe twice depending how many cards you're going to make because eventually your masks will absorb all that ink and it might actually absorb it to the point where it saturates it and goes through. So you might have to stop and let your masks, the ink on them dry but then you could totally use them again and again and again. So we have to cut them once and then use them again and again. Okay, let me keep going. So I'm getting where that snow is around his feet. And then we're going to have to cut up here, not too close though. You notice I haven't been very, you know, fussy about where I cut and how close to the edge, just making sure that I get all those little snow drifts. Ooh, that was good. I bet that's what they're called, the snow drifts, away. So when I stamp it again, those will show up in the darker color. So one more deer, and it won't take long. We're going to fussy cut him out real quick. This cute deer, look how cute he is looking at that little bird up there. Now I could take that, um, oops, sorry, I can't do two things at once, that removable adhesive and put it on the paper to make sure that my deers stay down really well. But on my sample card, I didn't really have to. So I'm gonna come up here between 
the legs here to make sure I just get all that snow in between there. And on my sample card, I could show you a couple places that I missed, but I'm not going to because I don't think it has to be perfect. I don't think you'll notice unless I showed you. So like I said, I'm going to take my deer now and I'm going to just lay it over this deer and you can kind of see, whoop, don't move on me, where it goes. And then on this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Hold on, I wrinkled his leg a little bit like this. But yet you see, you can still see those little snow drifts and stuff, except this one. Wait, he had a little bit of snow right here. I need to get rid of a little more. There we go. But I was covering up that I don't want to cover up like that. And then just because this is bugging me, I don't think it would matter. And then I'm going to cover up my little deer right here. So now that I have all my little deer masks, masked, and I know, you know, they're not going to have any ink on them, I'm going to bring in a darker ink. Now, because I've already stamped this off twice, and early espresso ink is darker than the pecan pie, I'm not going to worry about cleaning my stamp. And I'm going to take that early espresso and ink the whole thing. Now, there again, I don't think... Because I'm on the positioning tool, I should be okay if I don't get it inked perfect. Oop, and wait, one of my little deers. This is where you might, I'm too lazy, want to take the removable adhesive and put it on your deer so they don't move. Okay, stay put, deer. And then I'm going to just lay that over. Now we need a drum roll. Let's bring in that hockey puck. It's not a hockey puck. I don't know what this thing is called. Do you know what this is called? Maybe you need to let me know. But I have my deer there, right? And now we need a drum roll. And look how pretty. Tell me that's not beautiful now in the two colors. And you can see my masks here. So really, if I needed to, I could take my masks off, lay them back down, and re-ink it. But I'm not going to. I'm going to just leave it there for a second and let it dry while I go ahead and do um, <clears throat> the rest of the parts of my card. But these little pieces here, you could use again and again and again. Like I said, if they ever got saturated to where they were going through, the ink was sinking through, you'd let them dry. Just let them sit and let them dry, and then you could use them again still. Okay, so I don't want this to get on my card. I'm going to set this aside. Now this, I would just go run under the sink, and that's how I'd clean it off. Just trying to clean those big stamps sometimes is a pain. Okay, let's set him aside so he can dry a little bit. On the inside of my card, I'm going to use this stamp set called Greatest Glow, Brightest Glow. <laughs> Duh. And I like this saying, may the peace of this season light your world and may your new year be the brightest. I just think it's really peaceful and quiet, kind of like a deer is. So I'm going to stamp that in the early espresso in the inside of my card. I'm going to ink it up good, and I'm going to practice here. There's that scrap paper that I cut apart. I'm going to practice once just to make sure. Better safe than sorry. Prepare and stamp once or whatever they say, but my Stampin' Up! cardstock here is double-sided, so if I mess up, I can turn it over. Nope. Looky there. And then, because I want to put this little Merry Christmas right here on the front, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the um, cottage wreath, and I'm going to use this Merry Christmas, like I said, for the front, and I'm going to put these little bare branches. I don't know if that's what they're supposed to be. Maybe they're supposed to be green. I want them in blue to match my card, so I'm going to put those in a little bit of boho, boho blue, and that matches my cardstock, my ribbon, and just brings that color to the inside of my card. So I'm going to just set those there. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty for the inside? It's very simple. It would be fast and easy. You could whip out a bunch of those. Okay, so I'm going to use, because it's Christmas and we're supposed to be going making a bunch of cards, I'm going to use a punch for my greeting. This is our double oval punch. Since the stamp set I'm using is photopolymer or clear, I'm going to punch first and then stamp. That way you save on paper. And I'm going to stamp that in that early espresso too. This. 
a little bit of Merry Christmas. Practice once. Yep. Ooh, don't press so hard though. So I'm going to try to get it straight. And I'm going to see how this to me is kind of blurry. I push too hard because this is a fine line stamp. So this time I'm going to just set him down and let that ink sink in and without a lot of pressure. And I think this one, yep, I think that one looks a lot better. Plus it's easier to stamp on basic white than it is on scrap paper. So that might be part of it too. Alrighty, so let's keep going. Now on my card you see that I used some... Um, boho blue cardstock that matches um, everything else on my card but it tend to cover up a lot so this time I'm going to try some vellum and then if I don't like it <laughs> I'll come back and punch it out of that boho blue but I'm going to just put a piece of vellum behind <clears throat> my Merry um, Christmas this time so with just a little bit of stamp and seal I'm going to layer that onto that vellum here Okay, now I have all my other pieces and parts ready. Let's go ahead and finish up our card front. I think it's had time to dry, which that classic ink dries pretty quick. If you want to take this off, you could just take your finger and roll it off like this. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to just stick it onto my, well, I lied. Oh, here, hold on a second my silicone mat. We used it for a class that wasn't where it was supposed to be. But on the silicone mat, that way it won't stick to my desk. It won't stick to the silicone mat because we need to do a couple more things here to um, our card front. With my Balmy Blue Stampin' Blends, I'm going to bring in the lighter color and I'm going to just, first of all, color that little bird. Sorry, couldn't do two things at once. So he's a cute little blue bird. I'm going to follow along the bottom of all this little snow here just to give it a little bit more color. And you can kind of see, oh look there, I missed a little spot right there with the light, with the darker color, but now I can disguise it. Oops, I wasn't supposed to show you that stuff, huh? <clears throat> I should have cut a little closer to my deer's ears, but I should have done. But like I said, I think the only reason you would notice is because I told you. And then I camouflaged it with my blue blends here. Now, if you get it too dark here, or if you're picky about the, I'm not very artistic, and I'm happy with just a little bit of color on there, you could also bring the color lifter and kind of blend that in and soften it up. But I'm not going to worry about that. I think it's going to look just fine that all of this... There we go. So now it has only a little bit more right here. And then look how pretty that is now. <clears throat> and then last, we have one more thing. I'm going to bring some Wink of Stella, and I'm going to follow along that blue that I just did and give it a little bit of bling with that Wink of Stella and make that um, snow kind of glimmer. And boy, this Wink of Stella, you know what, that one seems dry. Let me take this one. I need to squeeze the tube and get that one going. Oh, this, this one's much better. That one just needs some love and attention. So if you have that problem and your Wink of Stella seems dry, you can kind of shake it down. You could squeeze the tube here. Just be careful because Wink of Stella a little bit is better than Globby. Well, that's my opinion. And Globby, yes, that's a technical stamping term. <laughs> Oh my. Okay, a little bit. And I know you probably can't even see the Wink of Stella on there, but boy, I can. And it adds a lot to that snow to make it sparkle and pretty and shimmer. Okay. Then, you know, while I'm at it, I think I'm going to add, did I already add it to my bird? I think I did add it to my bird. And I'm going to add it to the big guy here. I'm going to put it on his antlers. Now, when you do something like this, you need to be careful because um, if your ink's not dry, sometimes that ink will get onto the tip of your marker or of your Wink of Stella, and you don't want that to be spread around your card. So I'm going to be careful when I do his antlers. 
Sorry, I can't do two things at once. I think you know that I say that all the time, but there we go. So now he has that little bit of shimmer. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is really pretty. And I'll, I could sit here all day and just add a little more. I'm not. I'm going to let it go and say that's enough. So then we're going to take this piece here and we're going to add it to our layer. And my layer here is Early Espresso. And since I want my card flat, I'm not going to tie a knot or a bow. I'm simply going to take and this um, textured ribbon. This is another Boho Blue product. It's the, called the Texture Ribbon. And I'm going to cut, I don't know, about that much. I think I measured it. It was about 7 inches. But I just measured as I go, and that way I have very little waist. I want to make sure I give it enough room that it won't fall off. I'd hate for someone's card to come apart in, when they get it in the mail or something like that. But I don't want a waist ribbon either. <clears throat> so I'm going to lay it about like there. I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to put a little bit of tape here and a little bit of tape. Well, maybe I am. There we go. To get it here. And then wrap it around so it's straight. Leaving exp enough room there too for my oval to so it doesn't fall off the card. I think I am going to like the vellum too. We'll see. Like that. Now just to keep that, that ribbon even more sturdy, I'm going to just bring in some regular old scotch tape. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat now and set that there and this here and now that tape won't come apart for sure it looks like that okay then with a little bit of dimensionals which I still think <clears throat> even with the dimensionals my card will go through the mail just fine so I'm going to take and put dimensionals in the corners one in the center just so the tummy of my card doesn't sag. Get those backs off quickly. And then on a boho blue card base, which of course is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a fourth, just a half a sheet of cardstock makes a great card base here. Fold that with my bone fold to get a nice crisp edge. And then lay that down, not upside down, lay it down just like this. And now look how pretty. Without all that fussy cutting, or with all that extra layering, you have a flat little card like that. <clears throat> Which won't take too long now if I wanted to make another one, because um, I've already got all those pieces and parts. Where do I want? No, I think I still want my... Now I'm going to put a, a stronger adhesive on my... Um, because on this one, I use dimensionals, but I don't want the dimensionals to show, and I don't want the dimensionals on my adhesive, my um, ribbon here. So I'm going to take some uh, stronger adhesive, because I'm going to tape this to my ribbon, and I am going to take a glue dot here and just put a glue dot under my ribbon so it stays firm and holds my greeting on there. So just a little glue dot like that, and then my adhesive, my greeting there. And I do like that vellum piece on there. You can see that. Look how cute that is. You'll have to let me know which one you like better. Now, oop, I almost forgot the inside. Let's throw the inside on there. That would have been bad. Now, it, when I put the greeting on, I love that little Merry Christmas. It's very simple. I like the font. To me, it's just one of... Kathy's favorites, but it's a little bit small for that oval. And if you ever have that happen, all you need to do is grab a little bit of um, gems. These are called the in color dots. And I'm going to take a couple of those and just set it on either side. <clears throat> and then that way it makes the um, greeting fit better. So it doesn't look like a little tiny greeting on a big old oval, if that makes sense. And these gems happen to be round and smooth, so they won't get caught up in the mail either. So it looks like that. So just like that, and probably you would go a little faster than I would, especially now that we have those masks 
all cut out and ready to go. Let me clean up a little bit and show you my card here. Looks like that. Um, you have to let me know if you like the blue background or if you like the vellum background or which way you would do. So there you go, Jody. too. I hope that helps when you're getting ready to make your Christmas cards. And if you have something that works different or better, let me know. I'd love to hear your input. Alrighty, that's what I have for you today. I look forward to um, seeing you back here next Monday about the same time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.